What's up everybody, I'm Jesse Showalter and in this episode, I'm gonna show you my new and improved supercharged on steroids life hack productivity method that I've been building inside of Notion. That is a lot of buzzwords, I'm really sorry. I've been using this new and improved method for the last few weeks and it's been absolutely blowing my mind. It's helped me to organize anything and everything. And in today's episode, we're gonna talk about relational databases inside of Notion as well as sorting, filtering, and a new and improved dashboard space where I can see everything at a 10,000 foot view. Let's check it out. Okay, let's dive into my new and improved supercharged system inside of Notion right now. I'm gonna have to skip the dashboard for now. I'm gonna have to go right to my workspaces. Let me just close up my favorites here and go to my workspaces. And you can see I have my dashboard space. I have a task space, a daily habit tracker space, and a quick notes space. So the first thing I gotta do is I have to go to the crux of this entire system, which is my master task list. I've just named it tasks, given a little check mark thing right here, and I've laid it out in spreadsheet form. I'm gonna go through this. It looks like a lot at first, but it's actually not. And I'm actually, I feel like I could add more to this. I probably am gonna add more to this. So let's do it. Um, what I have is a column to mark things as done, okay? So I can mark things as done here. Um, I can name the task or describe it, and I can add it to a silo of my life. If you watched one of my previous videos, I kind of organize everything by silos in my life, whether it's business or personal growth or just for me, and these are kind of those main silos inside of those categories. So freelance projects, YouTube, uh, church, mastermind, all those kinds of things, those all belong to different kind of silos of my life. So. I'm gonna assign it to those categories or silos of my life. I'm gonna give it a status. Is it due today, tomorrow, this week, next week, next month, this quarter, this year, unplanned, or is it actually archived and done, okay? Then I'm gonna give it a priority. That's just one, two, or three kind of pow marks. It's just a visual way for me to see, if is it an emergency, is it on fire? Due dates. Um, and because I end up doing a lot of video content, I just have filmed and published. Here's the idea though. Anything that you would need to organize, you would add it here inside of your master task list. So if later on I needed a new property, like a completed file or something that goes here, I would name that file and now I could upload, you know, whatever kind of file that needs to go in there. I don't actually need that. So I'll just delete that, but let's, let's leave it there for now. Let's just see how we roll with that. So with that being said, anything and everything that I would need here, I'm gonna add a column for it. Why? Because when I create a new item in this list, now I have the opportunity to mark them, name them, do everything. So I'm gonna name it here, due date, silo, status, all that stuff, and then boom, maybe even add a file. I can type in it as a page and add all the notes that I need to for it, and then I've added something to this master task list. This is a dump. This is anything and everything I can think of that's coming up on the horizon. And you can see it's organized, we're gonna get to that in a second, by today, and but it's ordered chronologically, okay? But as I scroll down, you can see I have lots of stuff. I have 44 things right now in this list, but that's because those are the things that are to do. So before I go any further, let's talk about views. I've created a few views, okay? Right now you're looking at the things that are yet to be done, the to-dos. Next, I could go to the things that have been done. I scroll down, you can see, well, how many is that? 99 things that have been done or added to this list and then completed by checking them off. And then I have everything. This is things that are, have been done and things that haven't been done. Everything just smashed into one kind of dump, okay? So um, let's talk about these different views. Anytime you want a view, you're just gonna create a view. And I just created a spreadsheet view. I it has everything in here in these spreadsheets. And now let's go to the next most important piece of this, which is filtering and sorting them, okay? So I've come to this to-do list and I've said, I want you to filter anything in the done category, that's this column, that is not checked. That's gonna show me all the unchecked stuff, right? If I go over to the done stuff, my filter's gonna say, hey, I want all the stuff that's done that is checked, okay? So I'm filtering things out. That's the second piece, okay? Master task list, dump everything in there. Number two, sort it. Filter everything out, excuse me, filter everything out and create your different views. Number three, then you wanna sort it. So I have some rules that I've created. Hey, I want everything to sh uh, be ascending to its status, okay? So I want the things that are today to be up top and the things that are really far off to be down at the bottom. Then after you're done doing that, I want you to sort ascending the due date. 
Then after that, show me priority, okay? You can mix and match these things around. That's just how I like it, okay? So I really wanna focus on my status and then my due date and my priority. Now that you can see that I have all this one master task list, why, why is this so cool? This seems really, really confusing. Well, here's why it's cool. What's cool about this is I can basically create linked or relational databases featuring all of this information. Think of it like an alias to this database. Think of it like um, a version or an iteration of a master component. I can take this out, I can put it somewhere else and then sort it in a different way. Let me show you how. Um, for instance, if I come to my dashboard, for instance, um, and I come down to my task, you'll notice it's, it's that same icon and the same name, tasks, right? And even if I hover over, it says I can click to navigate to the original database. That's gonna take me back here to tasks. What I've done is I've embedded a, a version of this database in here and I've created a different view, this week's table, okay? And then I filtered it differently. Now I wanna show the things that are not checked and the status is not this quarter, this year, or unplanned. I wanna see the things that are today, this week, next week, and this month. And you can order these however you want. Now what's really cool is all of these are linked. So if I have this new item here called like test, 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 and I'm gonna put this, let's say, in my personal family, I'm gonna mark it for today. Um, I'm going to give it a high priority. Um, when I go back to my master task list, you'll see that test, test, test has actually been created. So if you create a task on any one of these linked databases or these instances of this database, it's always gonna dump back in to your master task list. If I delete it here, okay, delete it here, it's gonna delete it everywhere. It no longer exists in the instances of this dashboard. So if I head over to YouTube, here's like all of the information about content and the way that I plan content for YouTube. I have a calendar view. That's literally, look, it's just my master task list set into a content calendar and it's filtered out a certain way. So that only shows the things that are siloed in YouTube. Only showing things actually that have a due date because of the calendar format, right? So calendar format, due dates, those match up really, really nicely. But if I scroll down, I can see unscheduled content ideas, right? Here's a whole list of ideas, content ideas, that I haven't, I haven't really planned yet. I haven't written anything, I haven't put them in a spot, but if I want to check this out, I can actually interact between these instances. I can grab this piece of content, drag it up, and now it's immediately given it a date, it's ripped it out of this task list down here, or this, filtered view and it's put it up in this filtered view. So here's all of my unscheduled content ideas. If you go down below, here's all of my archived content, all the stuff that I actually have viewed. So that's pretty cool. I've just scheduled everything in multiple views. Really, really nice, okay? So I've done that in a bunch of places and anywhere that I want to. It's a freelance project. Um, I, I'm gonna come into each one of these individual freelance projects and I can put all of my freelance to-dos inside of here so that I can be looking at freelance projects and only see those things tagged in that silo, but it all still lives back here in my master task list. I don't have one of those out here on the, like the, the very outset of this freelance category. Why don't we create one? I'm gonna go here and type relational or database or create linked database, but I'll put it right there and I'm just gonna select tasks. If you don't see it, you could type it out and start spelling it. Let's do tasks. Then I'm going to, I have this view right here. Why don't we just really quickly uh, add a filter? So I wanna add a new filter. I want the silo that is freelance and business. Boom, now all the freelance and business stuff is here and I can see all those tasks in a glimpse. It's so nice. And so you can do this anywhere you want to. It's amazing. Actually, I kinda like that. Bring that back really quick. That was really, really nice. Don't go away. Drag this right up here. How about that? Let's put it right up here. That's nice. I like it. Super cool. Okay, great. This is awesome. I love it. I can create a new one of these inside of each one of my um, projects if I want to, and then they'll show up here. For instance, if I wanted to go into this old project that I did, Android UI project, I think what I would actually do first is go into tasks. I'd probably get rid of this file since we're not using that. And I would create a, um, a single select and I would call this project, okay? Um, and then I would maybe come down here, 
to um, like, let's create a new project here. Like let's call this Android uh, screens, like or mockups or something, okay? I could come into my project and put Android, okay? Now I've marked it as something. Let's put it in freelance and business. Okay, cool. So that's pretty cool. Let's go back to freelance projects. We see we have that, it's marked as Android. We could go in here and do the same thing. I could come in here, I could do database. Uh, how do we do it? There it is, create a linked database. I'm gonna select tasks, but I'm going to obviously, I don't wanna show everything in the entire world. I just want to, again, filter it, add my filter. It is a silo of freelance and business, and, and it has to be in the project Android. Now I only see the Android ones here, and I can create new to-dos. Those to-dos are gonna show up inside of my freelance projects, and they're also gonna show up if I've marked it as something to do today. It'll show up in my master task list on my dashboard. It just aggregates everywhere. That's what this is, an aggregated list everywhere. Let me show you the last few bits that I've kind of souped up my dashboard with so you can take a look. Sometimes I just need to take a quick note. So I've created this quick notes database um, so I can just grab one really, really quickly and just log it right there. I can come back and look at it whenever I want. It's the first thing I see in my dashboard so it's really easy to go to. That's a nice little addition for me. I like that. Next is my daily habit tracker. And I'm still working on this one a little bit. Um, I'd like to basically create a template out of this so each week I can create a new one. But for now, I'm just erasing everything each week and just starting over from scratch. So what I have is all of my daily habits in kind of this spreadsheet view. I'm doing Monday through Saturday, Sunday being my day of rest. So what I'm gonna do is put the habit over here. What's my goal? How many do I wanna accomplish? Do I think it's easy, medium, or hard? And then I wanna check them off as I go, okay? So checking, checking them off. I've also put in the calculations at the bottom. Hey, what's my percentage? And then what I'm doing is each week I'm looking at my percentages and seeing how I've done and you know how well I'm doing each day. And then later on, I wanna add a calculation to add all of those together and say, what was my success rate for this week? and then I can judge or gauge one week off of another. That's the goal. I haven't quite gotten there yet, but for now, this is a really, really nice dashboard for me. I can look at some quick notes, my daily habit tracker. I'm gonna check in on daily. And I'm gonna drop down to my tasks and see what is today. Do I need to move something from this week to tomorrow or tomorrow to today? And I'm just handling things like that, and I can always drop down and see everything in all the silos of my life. That is my new and improved supercharged workflow inside of Notion. Well, that's it. That's my new and improved productivity method that I've built inside of Notion. It's really simple when you get down to it, but super duper effective for keeping an eye on every single thing. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I do tons of videos about design and development and productivity and workflow just like this one, so maybe stick around. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments and check the description for a link to Notion if you wanna check it out and maybe use it yourself. Hope you guys are having an amazing week designing amazing things, making amazing things, and organizing all of the things. I'll see you in the next one.